Thank you for your patience and cooperation. The boarding will begin in a few moments. Hello YouTube and welcome, Frick here, and I'm going to be doing my first flight for my Let's Play Flight Simulator X FS Passengers video series. In this flight, I'm going to be going from KFAR or Hector International Airport in Fargo, North Dakota to Flying Cloud KFCM Airport in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I chose to go to Flying Cloud as opposed to the bigger Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport simply for realism's sake. Uh, with a small aircraft like the Cessna 172, I wouldn't have want to have to deal with a Class B airport and all the fees and landing fees and whatnot that are associated with that big of an airport. So it is more realistic for me to fly to Flying Cloud than it would be to Minneapolis-St. Paul International, and that is why I'm doing that. Also, you'll see that the weather is clear. Uh, normally, I'm going to be trying to use real-world Rex weather... Uh, Rex Essential weather uh, for my flights. However, the weather today, it is April 7th, and it is pretty crappy. It is extremely overcast and snowing. Uh, so instead of dealing with snow and all that overcast uh, weather right now, we are just going to be doing a clear flight for our first flight, but for future videos, expect some different weather. Um, also, I have all my frequencies already written down both for KFAR and Flying Cloud, as well as all my VOR frequencies, because I am going to be using VOR navigation to get to Flying Cloud. I will show you later on in flight how I got all those frequencies and how I do some of my uh, flight planning. Also, if you've seen any of my other videos, you will know that I am pretty heavy into realism and... Because of that, I run checklists for everything. So I do have a checklist here for my Cessna 172 SP. So I will be running through those. Uh, I'll probably get started in them uh, right now, actually, uh, before we start boarding any passengers. So normally with any Cessna 172, you would do your exterior and initial uh, startup checks. This would include, you know, something some fuel uh, and checking for contaminants, checking the props, engine cowling, all your flight control surfaces, your wheels, and everything like that. However, for simulation sake, because we cannot do that, we are just going to assume that all our initial checks are completed. So we're just going to go straight into the cockpit into the pre-start checklist. So pre-start checklist, parking brake set. I'm going to hit control P to pull out my parking brake. Throttle. We want that closed and we can see that it is pulled out. Magneto starter switch in the off position, which it is. Battery and alternator master switches off, as well as the avionics master switch, which is off. Fuel pump, uh, we want that off as well. And mixture control, we can see that I have it pulled all the way out, so that is in the cutoff position. Next, we'll turn our battery on, and at the same time, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my alternator. Panel lights on if we wanted to, but I'm not going to turn them on right now. Flight controls check. Uh, we don't have a control lock in, and we can assume that we checked our flight controls during the pre-flight check. Flaps, we want those up. We can see that they are up, but we could visually check outside the window to make sure they are up as well. Fuel quantity, we'll check that, and we can see that it is low. We are actually going to be adding fuel once we set up our flight with our passengers to Flying Cloud, so that will get corrected. Fuel selector, we want to make sure that that is on both, which we can see it is vertical, so it is on both. Avionics switch, we can go ahead and turn that on now. So avionics switch is down here, and we can see that all our avionics came to life. So we have our avionics on. Check weather is going to be the next thing. I'm going to actually do that once we get our passengers on, just because I don't want the ATIS information to change. <clears throat> Request clearance, again, we'll do that. Trans transponder, we can't adjust it to standby here, but we can see that it does, is on 1200. Zero, zero. And finally, I am going to go and turn on my beacon, so that way it is on before I actually start up my aircraft. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start setting all of my avionics right here. So what I like to do is I like to have my frequencies as much kind of set as possible right away, and then my nav frequencies as well. So we are going to be coming from KFAR. So I'm actually in this first one right here. 
I am going to be putting in the frequency for the KFAR VOR so I know what it is, and it's 116.2, and that'll help us find where we are at so we can see that we are already connected to that VOR. The next one I'm going to put in is the Alexandria VOR because that's the next VOR that I'm going to try to, to intercept, and that frequency is 112.8, so I have it in the standby, and I'm going to put it to the active for NAV2, but we will see that we are too low to the ground and not close enough to connect to that VOR as of yet. However, I do know that from this KFAR VOR, which we have set, I need to fly at a heading of 116 to intercept this VOR. So I am going to be uh, going ahead, and that's why I connected to this VOR, so we can fly at a heading of 116 from it. And that should get us to where we can intercept the Alexandria VOR. Next, I am going to turn my ATIS information. I'll probably do that on COM2. So ATIS for Fargo is 124.5. So quick put that in. <clears throat> and we'll put that to the active. Ground, I'm going to actually put that on my COM1. That is 121.9. And you can notice that I'm, I'm manually doing all of my comm again. That's for realism's sake. I don't like doing it through the ATC window. <clears throat> and we're not going to put that active because I don't want to listen to it right now. Uh, also, you'll notice that when I do get clearances or instructions, that they are not going to be printed in the ATC window. I disabled that because that forces me to write them down and to listen and pay attention which again adds another level of realism and so that is why I do that. So I got one two one decimal nine which is our ground. I'm also going to quick go put that on active so I can uh, change the standby to one three three decimal eight which is Fargo Tower. So now during my taxi and when I'm at the hold short line to go onto the runway I will not have to deal with doing that. All right, so we have our avionics pretty much set. We have our ATIS, we have our ground and our tower. We'll get approach uh, once we take off. So I'm not gonna put that in as of right now. We got both of our VORs set. So we have our 116.2, which is uh, Fargo. We have 112.8, which is Alexandria. Up here, I am then gonna change to 109.0, which is our Darwin VOR, which is after Alexandria, we'll switch back to COM1, and that'll be our Darwin. And then down here, I can put in 111, maybe, 111.8, which is gonna be our Flying Cloud VOR. So we have all of our VOR frequencies set into our nav right now. I'm going to have the DME on com nav 2 actually so when we do intercept the Alexandria VOR we'll be able to see our distance from that. With that we have all of our avionics kind of set how we want them. I am going to actually uh, set our autopilot up as well since we are flying east uh, I'm going to be flying at 5,500 feet, so I can be on, if you're in an easterly direction, cruising uh, flight altitudes for uh, VFR is usually an even numbered, or an odd numbered altitude for flying east, plus 500, so that's why I'm going to be choosing 5,500. If I was going west, I'd probably do 6,500 or 4,500. Uh, so that's why I'm going to have that on. Also, I'm going to change my heading bug to a heading of 116 because when I do my autopilot, that'll uh, be the heading that I'm going to want to intercept the Alexandria VOR. So we have that at 106. So we have basically all our avionics set. We have our plane ready to be started, and we have our autopilot ready but off. With that, we can go into FS Passengers, and we're going to start a flight. So we're going to load current aircraft. There are two passengers waiting for us because this is our first flight, and no one wants to fly with us yet. Uh, actually, I'm going to cancel that, too, because we are going to have to control E to open our door. Or... Oh, what did I do? No, don't turn on. 
Maybe control E is engines. Uh, Shifty. Shifty is open door. So, uh, <laughs> whoops. Anyway, our door is open for the passengers to come on, but we know our plane is going to start. So, anyway, we'll go into start flight, load aircraft. We still have those two passengers. We're going to put our fuel all the way up to 100%, and we can check to make sure that it is both 100% on both tanks. We're going to put two passengers in our plane luggage. We'll say they each have two luggage. Set destination. This is where we're going to type our KFC. M for Flying Cloud, and I'm not going to do a destination because I don't want to figure all that information out. I don't care enough about the bonus points right now. Maybe in future videos. So destination okay. set. So we can see that we are going to fly destination cloud. set. The type for this flight is going to be a normal flight because we are going from one airport to another. We're not going to be doing a tour flight where you have to land at your same departure airport, and it's not an aerobotic aerobatic flight because I am not going to try to shake them up and I am in a Cessna 152 and I don't want to shake them up in that aircraft. So it is going to be a normal flight and we'll hit set flight type. So we have a slightly forward center of gravity but we will be fine. Two luggage, one pilot, two passengers. We should be good and we got fuel. So I'm going to do a real-time load it's going to take two minutes, and that's where you have to have that door open with Shifty, not Control-E, because apparently that starts your engine. So I'm going to hit Start now. Engine instruments. And we can see kind of some of the information with this flight. Passenger weight, 532 pounds. They must be bigger people. I guess they have their luggage, too. Um... Slightly forward center of gravity. Whatever. We are fine. We have good information so i'm gonna hit start flight so we have passengers boarding the plane with that we have our pre-start checklist completed i'm actually going to call atis right now get the atis information Fargo airport information november 1-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-2-3-
and annunciator lights we can check while we're also checking all our other gauges to make sure everything is in the green which it is so i'm going to pull up the atc window and we are ready to get our taxi clearance to taxi and we're going to be departing to the south even though we're going to be heading southeast but that fargo bor is south of the airport so that is why i'm going to be departing to the south All right, so we got our clearance. I'm going to acknowledge taxi clearance. Taxi, hold short, runway 36. Using taxiway, Charlie 3, Charlie, Bravo, Golf, Bravo, Golf, Papa, Hotel, Quebec, 7, 8. All right, flight, Papa Hotel, Quebec, 7, 8, taxi into runway 36. So we are ready to taxi. Everybody has their seatbelts on, and let's go ahead and do this. Charlie 3. Three, I want to say it's to the right, so I'm just going to quick turn on progressive taxi. Oh, it must be to the left. Yep, okay, it is to the left. So I know where to go. So we are going to put on, oh, we have our parking brake on. We'll turn that on, control P. Oh, and actually, we got to go into our taxi checklist. I am failing right now. So our before taxi checklist we need our nav lights on. We need our taxi lights on. Heading indicator, altimeter, uh, we already have that set. Instruments are all normal operations. Radio and av avionics are all checked and set. Autopilot is set and off and request taxi clearance. We have done that. So our before taxi checklist is complete. Taxi checklist now. Parking brake is released and we can taxi to our assigned runway. I haven't flown for a while, so forgive me if my uh, taxiing and flight is not very good right now, because I am actually using uh, the rudder pedals, like I said, and things like that, so my, my, my taxiing ability may fail me slightly right now. Continue taxiing. I'm probably going to turn a little shy of this turn line just because I don't want to clip one of these other planes and I could see myself actually doing that. And we don't want that to happen. So there is taxiway Charlie 3 right here and then Charlie. So we will be turning right on this. If you're unfamiliar with taxiing, you can do the turn on progressive taxi. I prefer to try not to do that. I would rather, uh, what I usually do is pull up airport diagrams so I can see their taxiways. And then once I have their uh, taxiways, then I try to manually fly it, or taxi it, I should say. And when we're in flight and I'm showing you my kind of pre-flight setup and how I do my flight planning, I can maybe show you how you can pull up some of those taxiways and airport diagrams so you can uh, so you can manually do your taxi if you so choose. We're turning left on taxiway Bravo. Oh, my game froze slightly and I overshot my turn. All right, so we have right here runway 279 and I am just gonna hold short at this line again in real life you would until you get instructions is there a piper coming there I don't think they're coming here they're five miles away they're not gonna give me instructions to proceed so I'm just gonna keep on going but I am gonna check both ways like you would do at the hold short lines all right we are on taxiway bravo and this is a rather long taxiway so normally during your taxi or your max speed for this aircraft we're not going to want to accelerate past 20 knots but as you can see i'm clearly blowing that as i'm almost at 45 or 50 knots uh, i don't want to take off but at the same time i don't want this taxi to last 12 years so i am going faster than i probably should but we want to get these passengers to Minneapolis uh, sooner than later. 
and I don't want this video to be 90 minutes of taxi and 10 minutes of flight. So I'm going to be taxiing fast. Like I said, I do try to keep things as realistic as possible, but if I do deviate from standards, I will try to explain why I am doing that. Or if I deviate from standards and I don't realize it, call me out and say, hey, Frick, you're an idiot. Why did you do this when you should have done that? And I'll respond and say, I am an idiot. Thank you for pointing that out. And I will try not to uh, do that anymore. All right, so the runway is pretty much behind us or kind of at a 45 degree angle from us right now. We're still on Taxiway Bravo. We're gonna have to kind of go to the right, but not a sharp right to continue on it. Our taxi instructions were Charlie 3, Charlie, Bravo Golf, Bravo Golf. And I know somewhere this taxiway turns to golf and then goes straight back to Bravo. We get a hold position. Hold position, Papa. Hotel, get back in seven, eight. But I'm not sure exactly. Hotel, get back in seven, eight. Continue taxi. All right. Well, I get to continue taxi already. Papa, hotel, get back. Must have to stay behind that uh, beach craft. All right. I think right here where it turns is where it turns to golf and then turns back to Bravo. I'm not sure. But we will continue to turn and not accelerate that quickly because I don't want to kill our passengers or freak them out horribly. And here we can see that we are on taxiway golf now once we turn onto here. You can see that right here. So maybe it's after this that it turns to uh, Bravo. Or maybe it's right here when you're on when you cross this runway. Again, we have another runway right here, so I am holding short like I would in real life. Hold short, make sure there's no aircraft. Don't see anything, we're not gonna get any instruction to proceed, and I am gonna go forward some more. And we are gonna be parked right behind that beach craft and the car. start slowing down I'm not sure why there's a pickup there but we are gonna stop ourselves right here and hit the control the parking brake so we're back basically taxied to where we want to be but I'm gonna stay on ground because we're not quite to the whole short line and I'm not gonna tune to tower yet and since we're here I'm gonna do the before takeoff checklist um, also during the check taxi check light list a few things that I was checking were the brakes and my directional uh, gyros and things like that turn coordinator to make sure they were functioning I kind of just do that in the background it is on the checklist uh, but I never manually called them out but I do look for that so here's your artificial horizon and your turn coordinator and things like that in your direction making sure that it lines up with your compass so I was doing that when we were doing our taxi also I know that my brakes worked because I used them so I'm gonna move into my before takeoff checklist. Parking brake is set, fuel quantity. We're gonna check that and we can see that it is full. Fuel selector valve should still be at both. Throttle is idle, which it is right now. Mixture is rich, alternator switch verified on, which we know it is on. Throttle, and this is where I would do run up to 1800. Since there's an aircraft in front, I don't really want to do the run up, but we'll do it anyway. So we have our parking brake on. We're going to bring our throttle in. You can see my RPMs increasing. And then you bring it to about 1800. But we're slightly moving forward. I'm just going to do 1500. Here is my magnetos. If I move it over. You will see that your RPM slightly drops, about 50. Bring it back to the start. And you will see that it runs up again. If I bring it over to, you'll see that it drops again. And we'll bring it back up, maybe. 
and it slightly came up about 50 RPM. So we know our magnetos work. Our ammeter, we're checking for positive charges, which we have. All our engine lights and instruments are still in the green, no enunciator lights. So we can put our throttle back to idle. Oil temperature, we'll check that, make sure that is good, and it is in the green. Elevator trim, we'll set that for takeoff. Uh, for some reason, uh, FS Passengers requires you to at least have one detent of flap set for takeoff, so I will go ahead and do that, and I will manually check that they are one detent down. Radios and avionics are set. Landing lights, we're going to go ahead and come down here and turn on our landing lights. We are going to turn off our taxi light. Strove light is going to go on. Pedo heat, we are not going to be turning that on because it is nice. And transponder is on 1200, zero, zero, and we can request taxi clearance or takeoff clearance when this Beechcraft leaves. All right. They are going on to the active, so I'm going to take off my parking brake and I'm going to go to the hold short line so I can get my clearance. So I'm going to be tuning to 133.8 and request takeoff clearance VFR from Fargo Tower. Alright, so we'll acknowledge our hold short and wait for this Beach King Air. Once he takes off, they'll probably let us taxi on and wait. Taxi into position and hold. Passenger seatbelt sign is still on. Their satisfaction as of right now is 100%. We'll see if that actually lasts. And we are holding. Takeoff checklist smoothly increased. Throttle to full. Brakes release. Our uh, V1 or decision speed is going to be at 55 knots, and VR rotate is going to be at 65 knots. All right, we're cleared for takeoff. All right, so we are going to slowly 1 1000, 2 2000, 3 3000. We have full throttle in. There's our V1 decision speed. I am looking good. 65 knots coming up, which is our rotate. It's still looking good, so I'm going to go ahead and rotate. Going to trim up. Alright, we are increasing our speed, look behind us, and we are still relatively on the runway path, we are climbing, set us to climb a little quicker though, want about 10 to 15 degrees, I had about 10, um, moving it a little, a little more. We'll look where we are right now in the airport, and we are pretty much passing the runway. Just a couple more seconds, and I'm going to start to bank to the west, and I'm going to follow the pattern, basically, flying straight south. So I am turning. kind of a westerly direction heading I'm gonna fly this way for a little while you can see the airport behind us and I downloaded a custom custom uh, 
airport pack uh, or details I guess for this airport you can see the main terminal right there we took off right there which is the Fargo Jet Center there's our runway 36 which we took off on here's some of the other runways that we cleared but it's a I'm pretty happy with uh, how this airport detail looks I think it looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and start banking now again to the left uh, as I want to get to a south Heading, which is about right there. Dipping a little bit. All right, our climb out throttle, we want that roughly at 2300. I got it about at 2300, where you can see the RPM is right here. Mixture, we want that rich, which it is rich. Autopilot, check and set. It's all checked and set, but I'm not going to engage it as of right now. I've got to bank a little to the right to stay on my south heading. Landing lights, we can turn them off. The game does require you to have them, or FS Passengers, I should say, requires you to have them on until, I think, 10,000 feet or something like that. But I am a 1,000 feet above the airport, so once I get a little further out, I'm going to turn them off. We'll see if I get penalized or not. I'm not sure if I will. Um, because if we go into our setup, I'm going to go into difficulty right now. Everything is set to realistic, so that's what I wanted. Airspeed. We want about 80 knots. We're a little shy of that, but we're, we're doing our climb out. We're doing well. And we can see that we connected to our VOR for Alexandria. So what I am actually going to do is start flying towards that. So we can see that in order to go towards it, I'm going to have to flip this around. We're going to need to have to fly at about a 1, 1, so it's going to be about a 1, 1, 2 heading or 116 roughly, so I'm actually going to start turning some towards that. Start to level out again. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come down here and turn on my heading hold. So my heading is being controlled now by autopilot. I'm not doing anything to control my heading. We are still in our climb out, so I'm going to try to get to 5,500 feet. We still have about another 2,000 feet to go, 2,500, so we're going to continue to climb. But right now, where we are, until we get to cruising altitude, I'm going to keep my landing lights on. You can see Fargo Airport right there and the lovely city of Fargo right here. It's actually got the park mapped out. That's kind of cool. And the Fargo Dome. Where, uh... Oh. Alright, so we're going to turn to Fargo Approach on 120.4. So we will uh, do that on COM 1. 1, 2, 0. I'm going to point four. Don't have to acknowledge that. One two zero decimal four. We'll switch that to the active, and we're going to request a flight following. Hotel, Quebec, seven, eight, this type, Cessna, Skyhawk, three miles south of Fargo. Request flight following. Papa, Hotel, Quebec, seven, eight, Fargo, approach. Fox three zero five one. Three zero five one. Papa, Hotel, Quebec, seven, eight. Radar contact three miles southeast of Fargo, three thousand four hundred altimeter. Altimeter is at 2999 or 2, and that is right. Acknowledge radar contact. I'm going to start leaning back my uh, mixture. I'm losing a little bit of throttle and not going as fast as I would like to be going, so I'm going to 
change my descent a little bit. We are still heading towards our desired location. I'm going to have to change this slightly because we are slightly going off target. That should hopefully correct it a little Argo, bit. Doing my turn with my autopilot. Alright, so we are nearing 4,000 feet, so we've got 1,500 feet left in our climb out. And then we will set our aircraft for cruise at 5,500. And when I do that too, I'm also going to try to increase our airspeed, see if we can't get it to around 100 some knots, maybe 110 for cruise. So we just have a little longer to do our climb out. Argo, approach Cessna November, Cessna 846 X-ray with you. Cessna November 5846 X-ray, Argo, approach, roger, altimeter 2992. Argo, approach, we'll travel 9 Trying to slightly increase my, uh, my climb so I can get there a little quicker without bleeding off too much airspeed because I don't really want to lose any more airspeed than I have lost. Checklist says that I should be able to climb out at 80 knots. I realize I still have my flaps down. That'll... <laughs> Whoops. Don't be dumb and fly like me with your flaps down the entire time. See, normally I would never take off with my flaps down, but FS Passengers requires you to at least have that one detent, so I keep on forgetting to put them back up after I take off. So that's why I couldn't get up to 80 knots and my climb was so slow. Ah, oh, terrible. Now, if FS Passengers would not make you have a detent of flaps down, that would be awesome, especially for these smaller GA aircraft. I understand, you know, possibly for... Uh, a larger Boeing or something like that, you might want to have your flaps down or do a short field takeoff, but I had all the runway in the world to do a no flaps takeoff with this aircraft. But as we can see, that increased my airspeed to 90, and my climb is a heck of a lot better now. I'm at 800, it should settle down at around 600, 500, roughly. Or just keep dropping. Slowly increasing. We can see that we are at 5,000 feet, so we have another 500 feet to go. Still slightly deviating from our path, but not too much. Since we have connected to the Alexandria VOR, I no longer need to know where I am in relation to Fargo, so I'm going to go ahead and switch my nav 1 over to the Darwin VOR now, which is 109.0. And I'm not going to connect to that for quite a while. As you can see, we still have 78 miles before we even intercept our first intersection point, which is that Alexandria VOR. About 300 feet in the climb left. And then we are going to start leveling out for cruise. And all of a sudden I just... I don't know if I hit a pocket of warm air or something, but my aircraft just started uh, going up. Uh, we'll pull back some, try to level out, and... There we go. Start trimming our aircraft four level flight all right still have a little high on our trim Heck. and of course like me I overcompensated go figure all right so we're basically level. 
I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my altitude hold now. You can see that it's adjusting the trim. We are leveling out. We're still about 100 feet high. My aircraft is kind of bumping around. I'm not sure if that's something else, but autopilot will correct us. We are looking good. I'm going to go ahead and go down into my lights now and turn off my landing light. Like I said, I don't know exactly when you need that on, but it's not going to be on now. I'm also going to turn on my panel light right now just because it was slightly dark in there. Not sure where the sun is around us. Straight above us, apparently. Oh, you can see Fargo in the distance right there. Down here, you can see Interstate 94. Um, that would take you all the way to Minneapolis, but I don't want to follow the interstate. Because it is not the quickest path, and I'm an airplane, and I'm not constricted to roads. So, we are level at 5,500. We'll look at our instruments, and we can see that our ammeter and our vacuum gauges are in the green. We can see our oil pressure and temp are all in the green. Fuel, we are good. Fuel flow is in the green. Our EG temperature is not too high, which is exhaust gas temperature. We can see that we are cruising at roughly around 110 knots. 100, it's more around 105 knots. We are straight and level, 5,500, 2,999 or 2 is still set, and we are cruising nicely. I'm actually going to pull back my throttle some for this cruise. The trim will have to get adjusted some. So our climb out checklist is completed. Cruise checklist accelerates cruise speed, which is roughly 2,500 RPM. Um, so you can see I'm about 2400 in order to have 25 I'd almost have to have my throttle 100% in and I don't want to have it at 100% in so we're gonna be cruising at about hundred knots instead of hundred ten knots this checklist may be you know it is a real checklist so it might not work exactly in game how it should engine instruments uh, we just checked them engine temperature stabilized at cruise condition which they seem pretty stabilized as of right now keep a eye on this oil temperature because it does appear like it is moving up a little bit I want to just make sure that it doesn't get too high because I do have failures enabled so if I can uh, detect them early that is a lot better than not so I need to keep my eye on that oil temperature just to see how high it gets. Fuel quantity, we have checked that. It is good. Radios are tuned and set. Audio pi autopilot is checked and set. Lights are as required. And engine... Yeah, excuse me, I can't talk, but engine instruments are checked. So we are good on all our checklists. We are just now going to be doing a nice little cruise to Alexandria VOR, which is our first intersection point. Now, I've seen some videos where people like to watch the entire flight. I've seen other ones where here I've got 70 miles before I hit my first intersection point that I'm probably going to be cutting my video because it is going to be a long, uh, a long <laughs> flight where there is nothing going on. So... I am going to actually pause the video right now for you guys. I'll bring you back if anything else happens or if there are any changes. Also, before we get to Alexandria, I'll probably bring you back so I can kind of show you some of my flight planning processes. So I will bring you back shortly. All right, so we are back. We just got some new instructions from ATC, so I'm going to let you hear them. Argo approach. Please repeat transmission for Papa Hotel. Come back 7 eight. Papa Hotel Quebec 78. Contact Minneapolis Center on 126.1. So we need to go to 126.1, so I'll acknowledge handoff. 126.1 for Papa Hotel Quebec 78. 126.1 for Minneapolis Center. Who is going to do our flight following? Fargo approach small to him. Contact Minneapolis Center. Minneapolis Center, Papa Hotel, Quebec 78, with you at 5,500. 
Hoppet Motel, Quebec 78, Minneapolis Center, Roger, altimeter 2, Niner Niner 2. All right, so we still have two Niner Niner 2 there doing our flight following for us. I just adjusted our heading slightly. We can see that we're slightly deviating. I'm probably going to do it two clicks. You can see that we almost need to be at 130, so I'm at 128. Also, since I have you here, uh, what I might as well do now is quick show you some of my planning tools that I use to do my flight planning for Flight Simulator X. I do use some real world tools uh, and then use them in correlation with the sim. Uh, it keeps a level of realism going and it's, I don't know, I like it. So I'm going to quick show you what I do. We're going to lose sound when I bring over my Internet Explorer window, so I apologize for that, but uh, I will show you quick what I do. So I've got over now my internet, or I guess it's Firefox window, and the first website that we see is SkyVector. SkyVector is basically a digital library of aeronautical charts. Aeronautical charts, uh, if you ever do fly, uh, they are <laughs> pretty valuable, and they give you basically a map of the world or whatever location you're in. So right now, the chart I am using is a Twin Cities sectional chart, which is right here. Uh, my plan is to start flying to all 50 states, so after uh, the Twin Cities one, I thought about going up to Duluth and then over to uh, the UP of Michigan, uh, which I would need the Green Bay sectional chart for, so I could just click on that and boom, I'm in the Green Bay sectional chart, which is going to be an invaluable tool for doing my flight planning, but right now I am in the Twin Cities and I'm actually going to make this a little smaller just so I can see if anybody's contact me contacting me or if I see green up here I know that I'm in a dive for the ground and I'm about to die a horrible horrible death also I turned off my passenger seatbelt sign since we are cruising we're we're doing fine with our cruise so as I said we are going from Hector International Airport which is right here or far KFAR uh, down to Flying Cloud Airport in Minneapolis which is down here a uh, few things we can get from this chart is we can see these blue dotted circle around uh, Hector International, and that tells us that it is a towered airport. If we were to come over here to say, uh, I guess here's Jamestown Regional, there's these purple dashes around, it means it is a non-towered airport. So you would use CTAF instead of contacting uh, the tower. Also, here you can see the circle with these uh, heading notches in there that is for a VOR so right in the middle you'll see this sign and that is where the VOR is located on the map and you'll see that it is the Fargo VOR which is channel 116 decimal 2 so that is what we connected to initially and as I said I was gonna go to Alexandria which if we start coming southwest we can see is right here this is the Alexandria VOR that's what we're heading to right now and we are roughly 47900 Bombardier 18 Sierra Papa Hotel Quebec 78 Papa Cessna Caravan inside even though I have no idea where it is. Pacific 3, 5, 8, 6, contact Minneapolis Center on 1, 3, 4, I don't know, 7, we, we might collide with another aircraft because I'm supposed to be watching for them. But I'm going to continue to show you what I am doing. So anyway, we connected to the Alexandria VOR. Um, and what we are going to head to from that is this Darwin VOR, which is 109.0. Now, how I had my... Uh, what happened here? Stop being blue. Now, once I get to Alexandria, I know that I need to turn to a heading of 141 degrees in order to intercept this Darwin VOR. The way I know this is, you see these blue lines coming out of the Alexandria VOR? These are directions to other VORs. So you see this one coming here. This is a straight down direction, which will take you to this VOR, which is the Redwood Falls VOR. This one right here, which has 141 degrees with the arrow pointing southwest, if you follow that, you can see that that is connecting you to this Darwin VOR, which is the next one that we are heading to. So 
that is how I know what headings and directions I'm going to be flying. I knew that coming out of Fargo, which is right here, and the Fargo VOR, I had to travel at 116 degrees, which is right here where we follow that to the Alexandria VOR. Then I know I have to take a l slight little turn to go a little more south then east to 141 degrees, which will take me to the Darwin VOR. And then over here is the Flying Cloud VOR. You can see it right here, and that's the Flying Cloud one. You can see that there is not a direct direction from Darwin to connect to that, but I can see that if I go from 109, it would take me to this Farmington VOR, but I don't want to go to Farmington. It's a little more south, so I probably have to fly at about a heading of 100 in order to intercept that flying cloud VOR. So that is how you can use aeronautical charts or skyvector.com that is a list of aeronautical charts to do your flight planning for your locations. Now, one thing to know is these frequencies are real world. Everything in this chart is real world. So some things might not be accurate. For the most part, FSX is built to what everything was, however, when the game was built. So some things have got updated. All the frequencies I know from Fargo, Alexandria, and Darwin are correct. However, you can see once I get to VOR Flying Cloud, it is 117.7. That actually has been changed real world from what it was back when the game was built. So in order to make sure I have the right frequency, frequencies, what I do is I cross-check them with the Flight Simulator X database. So I'm going to type in KFCM, which is Flying Cloud Airport, and hit enter. And this is in uh, fsxdb.com, and you will see that I am now at the Flying Cloud page. Basically what this is, is it's basically the airport facility directory for Flight Simulator X, not real world. So here you can see that at Flying Cloud they have these runways. They have a 10 left, 10 right, and 1 8. It also has their radio frequencies. When I said earlier that I already had their ATIS and ground and tower frequencies, this is where I got them. So their ATIS frequency is 124.9. Their ground is 121.7. They have two tower frequencies, so I will get those in-game once I get a little closer and I can select the nearest airport. Also, you can get distances uh, to different VORs and NDBs, or you can get ILS information as well. Here's ILS information. I know that the frequency is 109.7. While I am doing a VFR flight, I am still going to put in the ILS frequency into, so I can see if I'm on the ILS glide slope. It just visually helps with your uh, VFR landing, so that's why I'm going to do it. And then we can go to VORs. We can see that there is a Flying Cloud VOR, which, again, Sky Vector showed. However, Sky Vector is 117.7, and in-game it's actually 111.8. So there is a difference to that. Uh, but everything else is relatively accurate. I think Alexandria's might be in here. Maybe not. Okay, it's not in here, but... If you wanted to check Alexandria's VOR, this is where you would do it. So what I could do is go to Sky Vector, whoops, and not select a different aeronautical chart. And here's Alexandria. And we can see that there is an Alexandria airport, which is AXN. So if I come over here and type KAXN and hit enter, we can see that we're in Alexandria, Minnesota. We can collect VOR. Here is the VOR frequencies, and we can see that it is 112.8, which is the exact same as what Sky Vector or the aeronautical charts is showing. I'm going to zoom out. So I'm going to go back into FSX database and type in KFCM, which is Flying Cloud, where I am heading. So that's where I get the VOR information. Um, also, I believe the Darwin VOR is in here, and we can see that it, it is 109.0. You can also get NDB information and parking information in here, and it shows a map of the airport real world. So it is a really nice tool. If you want to get your frequencies and use it in correlation with Sky Vector, that is how I get my frequencies and do my flight planning. Now, there's also Air Nav. This is a real world, basically, airport facility directory digitally online. So if we go to airports, and we're going to go to Flying Cloud, KFCM, and type that in the ICAO code. 
and get airport information, we can see that we are, this is basically what you would see in an airport facility directory booklet, but all digital. So we can see that we are in Flying Cloud Airport, Minneapolis, Minnesota, USA. Here's the elevation of the airport. It gives you airport operations information. Uh, it gives you uh, some good things, uh, lots of good information in here that you can read. Airport communications that you can you can see that it is a towered airport. However, the tower is only open at certain times. So if you're coming in at night, you can see that you would have to use a CTAF frequency, which is right here. You can get the ATIS frequency, which is 124.9, which again correlates to the frequency that is in game 124.9 because everything they tried to be a real world just some things have changed because of updates so this is where you can get a lot of that good information about the airports another nice thing about this is i i mentioned airport diagrams where you can learn the taxiways here you can see that there is aerial photos of the airport you can scroll down you can see there are sectional charts for the airport However, I just use sky, sky Vector, which is a really good aeronautical chart uh, website. And that there's also airpoint distance calculators, sunrise, sunset calculators, just everything. And it's even got the, the METAR information, the TAF information, so you can get your weather. The NODAMs, if there are any that are applicable. However, the airport diagram is very good. So you click on that, it'll automatically open a new tab with the PDF of the airport diagram. I'm going to zoom in some. And you can see that here are the runways. There's a 10 right, there is a 10 left, and there is also the 1836 runway right here. Now, you can also see that there are taxiways. So let's just say I were to land on 10 right, because I'm coming from the west, and I would come into here and land here. We land here, and just say we take get off the taxiway on taxiway F. Now, if we want to, uh, I'm going to actually change it up. I'm going to come off F on this way and try to get over here. So we can see that plausible taxi instruction would possibly be take taxiway foxtrot to bravo to echo to alpha to parking or to the terminal which would be foxtrot now to go to bravo you could either turn right or left but since we're going to echo we're not we know that we're not going this way so we would take a left turn to echo and then take echo we could turn right or left but we know we have to get to alpha which is up here so we would turn left crossing these two runways to alpha into the parking area up here. So that is how you can use an airport diagram to navigate for your taxi instructions without having to actually use the taxi help um, where it shows all the arrows for you. So if you want to keep things realistic, this is how you would do that. And also, if you were really flying an aircraft, this is how you would plan your taxi so you know where to go at an airport without having to have a follow me a vehicle or something like that real world so if you want to add realism to your flight simulator uh these are some tools that i would definitely recommend using it's skyvector.com which is your aeronautical charts and they have them for anywhere in the united states fsx db.com or flight simulator x database.com which gives you your airport facility directory basic information for Flight Simulator X, AirNav, which gives you your airport facility directory information real world, so you can cross check that and stuff if you wanted to, to be real world. Uh, and also this is where you can get your airport diagram uh, for your taxiing so you don't have to use the progressive taxi. So I hope this information is beneficial to you. I hope you guys like it. If you do have any questions on some of this information, do feel free to message me or comment me asking, hey, I'm curious about this or what does this on an aeronautical chart mean? And I'll try my best to help you out because there is a lot of good information that you can get from even just an aeronautical chart alone. So if you do have any questions, definitely feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to help you guys out. With that, I'm gonna move that over to the side and we are gonna check where we are on our flight and we can see that nothing has changed really. We are just flying. Clear sky sign. Oh, we gotta report traffic inside. Oh, no, no. Get back to seven, eight, half the traffic. Oops. 
They're probably way behind me or something like that. I had to turn and to not crash into me, but whatever. I hope you guys learned something, so. With that, we're just going to do a cross check. We can see that we are in the green on all our gauges. Our oil temp isn't going up anymore, so I won't worry about that. That just must be the cruising temp for this aircraft. Our fuel is slightly lower. That is because we have been traveling. Everything is looking good. We're still relatively right on our path uh, to intercept the Alexander uh, VOR, which is at another 26 miles from now. So once we do intercept it, what we are going to be doing is banking a little more east or right uh, to go from basically our heading of 121 or what are we at, 128 right now. To a heading of roughly 141, so about right here. So we are going to turn a little more, uh, and that is to intercept that Darwin VOR. And so that is using VOR navigation. Yes, it is not a straight line to the airport, but because we don't have GPS here, uh, that is how we are going to navigate to know where we are going. Passenger satisfaction is still at 100%. I turned off the seatbelt sign. I think I said that since we are cruising and there is no turbulence. Uh, I would serve them something to eat, but there is no crew on board. Uh, with the light aircraft, uh, by default, you have no crew, so you cannot serve hot entrees, cold entrees, drinks, music, videos, or anything like that. Unfortunately, uh, I don't know why. You, you think it would be logical where you could, you know maybe have like a little crock pot right here um you know a battery operated crock pot with some macaroni and cheese where you could reach back and be like hey guys have some mac and cheese and open you know say a glove compartment and, or you know this pocket down here oh uh, where's my mouse pocket down here maybe have you know a few uh a few burritos there cold burritos that you could hand them but we don't have that and uh, we apparently cannot give them a coke either by reaching back so that's kind of silly, but whatever. If this was me in real life, I would have some something to drink. I would probably hand them all a Monster Energy drink, get their hump, heart pumping some. So if there is turbulence, they're like, oh, we're good. Give them a, you know, a turkey sandwich my mom made and put it in the, the little pouch there. Give it to them. But that's not how it is in the game, unfortunately. Looking out the windows, we can see that we are in Minnesota. And you can tell because it is lakes everywhere. After all, Minnesota is the land of 10,000 lakes, and I think I can count about 4,000 of them right here in my view. Um, water there actually looks pretty nice. We're going to hop out of the aircraft and look at the water with the sun there. I, wish, I kind of wish I had floats on this aircraft so I could take them for a little ride and maybe land in the water, go fishing from the boat. Nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of pilots who actually do that. It'd be kind of fun. But look at that. There's a nice boat down there. He's probably catching some massive northern pike and walleye. Maybe some smallmouth or largemouth bass. Or maybe he, he's moving, so he's got to be trolling for something. One, two, he's not perch five, fishing or five, anything five, like that. Six, nine, nine, zero. But if I had floats, that's what I would do. I would land on one of these lakes and I would definitely get myself going fishing. I'm getting a little off our uh, path, so I'm gonna turn right. It's gonna start to deviate more as we get closer because as we get closer, smaller deviations are gonna lead to greater deviations on here. That's just how it works. If you guys do not know how to do VOR navigation, I can maybe make a video on my Let's Learn video series if any of you do request it. Otherwise, you can search Google. Uh, there's some information on that. Or I'll say, actually, I think uh, in some of the lessons uh, that Flight Simulator X has, I, I do believe they do have how to do VOR navigation. Anyway, everything is still going well. I have to talk over the radio, I'm sure. So, anyway, we're 19 miles away. Once we get closer to the Alexandria VOR, I am going to bring you back. But as of right now, I am going to pause the video. All right, everybody, I am bringing you back. As you can see, we are 5.2 nautical miles away from our Alexandria VOR. 
I'm gonna quick bring in Sky Vector here and kind of show you where you where we are at. So here is the VOR right here. You can see that Alexander is here, and the VOR is not exactly on the town. Uh, so it is actually to the northeast of the town. Uh, looking, however, we are coming around at this angle. So off the nose, slightly to the right, we should see the city of Alexandria, and slightly past that, we will see Lake Osakis. So I'm gonna come back to the flight. And here we can see is where about Lake Osakis would be. And looking over the nose, if we can kind of see down here is where the city is going to be. So using our VFR skills, we can see that we are navigating correctly as everything is matching up to what it would be real world. So that is how we're kind of using our VOR navigation in correlation with VFR flight rules to do our navigation. So here is the Lake Osakis. Um, and here's the city. So we know that since the city is about right here and the lake is there, the airport is there, uh, it's a little to the northeast. So we should know that the VOR is right around under the dashboard around right here. So we're about two, two miles away from it. You know, if we were to fly right over it, uh, we would actually be able to see it in game, uh, but we are not gonna be able to do that because we are actually gonna be going right over it. Um, so we will not be able to see that. But we are seeing how everything is lining up with what Sky Vector is showing. So again, Sky Vector is very useful for your flights because you can see that you can not only uh, use it for flight planning, but you can use it as a map of a bird's eye view of the ground so you can do your VFR flight rules as well. Minneapolis Center is really busy because I find myself having to talk over the stinking radio all the time. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry about that. I hope you guys can hear me. If you can't, uh, tell me to crank up my mic for the next video, and I will go ahead and do that for you. Remember how I said as you get closer to the VOR, slight deviations are going to make greater deviations on your nav uh, indicator or your... Uh, VOR2 indicator, and we can see as we're getting closer, we are deviating quickly. So the VOR actually is going to be passing us to the right, so I'm going to go out of the aircraft to see if I can't find it somewhere down here. Uh, it's going to be to our right somewhere. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. They do have them in here. I do know that, that you can find them in here. I kind of feel like I'm like a spy plane right now. Spying down on all the people, the great people of Minnesota. Uh, we're still 0.8 miles away from it. So it should be right in front of us, roughly. <laughs> anyway. I don't know if you really even care about finding it, so I don't know why I'm putting in so much effort to find this stinking VOR. If you've never seen one, though, it kind of looks like a, a hat, almost. It kind of looks like an old, like, uh, what, you know, what, what, uh, people from Mexico, those big sombrero hats, I think is what they're called. That's kind of what they look like. Uh, they're kind of interesting, but anyway, we can see that we're actually passing away from the VOR, and on top of that, we have connected to the Darwin VOR uh, just now, so that is great. So I'm going to turn this around to where we can find the heading that we need to fly for that VOR to fly directly towards it, and we can see that it is going to be roughly a 141, which is what we knew earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and start bumping this to about a 146 apparently. That'll be fine. And since we have connected to our Darwin VOR, we no longer need our Alexandria VOR. 
toolbar can we are connected to a navigational aid. So I'm going to switch that away from it to 111 decimal 8, which is the VOR for Flying Cloud Airport. Also, in my DME or distance measuring equipment, I'm going to flip that up to Nav 1. We can see that we are now 58 nautical miles away from the DO Darwin VOR. So, what we are going to do is we're going to continue to fly towards that. Also, since we are using this and then we'll be using uh, Nav 2 for Flying Cloud, I'm going to go back to Nav 1 because this is also where my ILS is. And I'm going to switch my standby radio to 109. Decimal seven, which is the frequency to connect to the ILS at Flying Cloud, if they have us land on the ILS runway. We'll, we'll see if it actually works. Anyway, we have another 56.8 nautical miles to fly before we connect or contact our next intersection point, which is at Darwin VOR. So I am probably going to cut the video again and bring you back as we get a little closer. If you guys don't want me to be cutting the video, please do send me messages or comments saying, hey, we want to watch the entire flight, whether it be the entire flight through time acceleration. Uh, which I'm trying not to do in game because it has, actually does deduct you points in FS passengers if you do uh, time acceleration. So that's why I'm not using time acceleration. But if you want, what I could do is do time acceleration through Vegas Pro, which I do my editing in, and then. Uh, I can have the whole flight for you. So uh, if you do want the whole flight, let me know. There will be times where there will probably be a lot of silence though because this flight is gonna be about two hours long and I don't have enough things to talk about for two hours. Um, maybe if I was a comedian, I could do like flights with comedic routines in between, but I'm not a comedian. Um, I'm probably not even that funny. I try to be, but it probably goes out the door and no one finds it funny so uh, anyway if you do want to see the whole flights do let me know also if you guys want to see me fly somewhere in particular uh say you want me to fly to your home airport or something like that definitely let me know because i'm going to be touring around all of america in my flight simulator passengers or fs passengers uh, video series, and I'm going to be trying to hit all 50 states, so if you do want me to land in your state, or fly over your house, or do something like that, let me know, and I'll, I'll see if I can make that possible, so definitely send me messages or comments on where you want me to fly, also what aircraft maybe do you want to see me fly, uh, as of right now, like I said, my company is small, I only have a million dollars, I bought this aircraft, so I only have about $750,000, I could buy another aircraft or sell this one, um, but I'm gonna probably do, like I said, uh, some some flight tours to try to earn some extra income. Uh, I probably won't record all of those. I'll maybe just record one so you can kind of see what a flight tour looks like for FS passengers. Uh, but then I'm gonna do some of those on the side to earn some extra income. But if you, there is a particular GA aircraft that you would like me to see, uh, let me, uh, or like to see me fly uh, let me know and I'll see if I can make it a reality I do have a bunch of Karen Auto aircraft uh, so if I don't have the one that you want I'll see if I can maybe get it if it's not too expensive otherwise I'll try to do something maybe similar so uh, do give me suggestions on what you want to see with this video series anyway with that we are 51.6 nautical miles away so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video right now and I will bring you at, back if anything changes or if we get closer to flying cloud airport. well guys I am back and as you can see, we are 17.2 nautical miles away from reaching the Darwin VOR, which is just going to be up here. However, I connected to the Flying Cloud VOR. So what I am going to do is I'm going to find out what course I need to be on for that, which it looks like roughly around a 120, um, 115 maybe, and I am going to adjust to that. So we are going to be turning more easterly to a 115 uh, going plus 115 heading and I just kind of let the autopilot turn that for me 
<coughs> and I am gonna take away the Darwin BOR because I don't need that anymore. And so now I'm on the 109.7 frequency for NAV1, which is the ILS frequency for Flying Cloud Airport. And down here we can see that I am on 111.8, which is the Flying Cloud VOR. So that is what I am heading to right now. Another thing I am going to show you is I'm going to pull over my sky vector again and show you one other thing. So, we were coming from Alexandria Airport, which is right here, or Alexandria VOR, flying southeast to Darwin. Uh, we were about 17 miles out, probably around right here is where we connected to this flying cloud VR. So instead of coming down here and over, we are now just going direct. Now, one thing I want to show you is this in the aeronautical chart is Minneapolis St. Paul. As you can see, it is class B airspace airspace. So there is a large stack around here. There is a smaller one in here smaller one in here and smaller one in here and if you look inside of those stacks you can see that right here there's this hundred over sixty right here it's a hundred over forty what that is telling you is the altitudes that that stack of the class b airspace is applicable for so right here is about where we're going to be coming we're going to be coming around like this so right here we're going to be entering the class b airspace at four thousand feet and it is controlled up to 10,000 feet. If we were further south, just say we came all the way down to Hutchinson right here and started coming over, we could see that it doesn't enter until about 6,000 feet. However, what I am gonna do to avoid entering the Class B airspace and having to deal with transitioning into Class B airspace, I'm actually gonna descend because as of right now, if I were to enter here, at 5,500 feet, you would see that I would be entering Class B airspace because it's controlled from 4,000 feet up to 10,000 feet. So by descending down to 3,500 feet, I am going to be under the Class B airspace, so I will not actually have to transition into it. Here you can see is where Flying Cloud Airport is, and it's in this smaller ring right here, and you can see that it is 30 under 100. So that means that from one or from 3,000 feet up to 10,000 feet is where this ring is class B airspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be flying in like this at 3,500. And as I get closer, I'm going to descend under 3,000 to about 2,500 uh, coming in on my final approach. And that way, the whole time flying into Flying Cloud Airport, which is right here, I can remain under the Class B airspace, so I do not actually have to transition into the airspace. That is another reason why I'm flying to Flying Cloud as opposed to Minneapolis, because I do not want to have to deal with transitioning into the Class B airspace, uh, where it is controlled there. So I'm going to be staying under the Class B airspace, flying into the Flying Cloud B or airport, which is right here. So that is what my plan is. So in just a few seconds, I'm gonna clear this out. Gonna come back in here. Papa Hotel, Quebec 7-8. Contact Minneapolis approach yeah, on 126.5. Hey, okay. Contact Papa Hotel, Quebec 7-8. Contact Minneapolis approach on 126.5. Hey, Papa Hotel, Quebec 7-8. Contact Minneapolis Kind of works that I got the audio right as uh, I was getting a call. 126.5. Switch that over and contact the Minneapolis approach. That's that November 7th. And we stepped on some of you. Of course. Also, I'm going to switch this to NAV2 because we can see that we're 50 miles away from Flying Cloud Airport. Now. Contact Minneapolis approach. Hotel Quebec 7 8 with you 5500. Office Hotel Quebec 7 8 Minneapolis approach. Roger. Altimeter 2992. So we're at 29992. One other thing I'm going to quick show you in the aeronautical chart as well is you see these numbers here, like 2 with the 6, 1, 9, 2, 2. What that is, is that's the highest uh, obstacle or elevation in that area. So flying right here, I know that if I'm above 2,600 feet is what that's indicating, I will not hit any ground obstacles or towers or anything like that. 
Here you can see it's 2,600. Here it's only 1,900. So I was planning on descending to 3,500 feet. So coming from about here over to Flying Cloud, we will see that I will avoid all obstacles because there is nothing above 2,600 feet. So I'll roughly be 1,000 feet above any obstacles that are in our way. However, we will still use uh, VFR flight rules to make sure that we're avoiding anything, but there should be no ground obstacles uh, that we could collide with. So we will be above ground obstacle height. We will be below class B airspace height. So that is why I'm going to be going down to 3,500 feet. So I'm going to go back in here and come down here and turn off my altitude hold switch because I'm going to manually do my descent. So I'm going to pull back the throttle slightly. And as I pull back the throttle, what it's going to do is it's trim for airspeed and use throttle for altitude. So I'm going to keep my trim where it is because I'm going to keep my 100 knot airspeed. But as you can see, I am descending. And I'm only going to do about a 500 foot a minute descent because uh, we have plenty of time to descend. And anything more than roughly 700 feet a minute, I think it is, is where passengers get uncomfortable with a non-pressurized aircraft because you might run into different pressures where your ears might start to pop or something like that. Um, I know if you descend too quickly, FS passengers will uh, dock you points as well, so we are not going to be descending that quickly. We're just going to be descending at a nice steady about 500 foot uh, a minute descent rate on our VBI or vertical speed indicator, VSI or VBI vertical velocity. So we are going to continue our descent until 3,500 feet, and you know the reasoning behind that. Also, another reason of doing a slow descent like this is you actually save yourself fuel. So instead of quick diving down to um, the altitude you want to be at and then cranking up your throttle, here I pulled back my throttle. I was almost at 2,500 RPM, now I'm roughly only at like 2,100 RPM. I can actually pull it back a little further to about 2,000 RPM for the p Knowledge that uh, collision avoidance right there. Um, but anyway, by doing this long gradual descent, uh, we've actually pulled back the RPM. The engine's not working quite as hard. And because of that, we're not burning fuel. And by holding out the descent longer, it's longer where the engine is not working as hard, and that's less fuel that you are burning. So that's one way to conserve fuel as well, is by kind of stretching out your descent some. Another thing to remember though, in these long descents when your engine isn't working as hard, it is possible that you could run into a carburetor icing if it was cold enough outside. That is a time where you maybe would turn on carb heat if you had it in your aircraft. Now, in this default Cessna 172, there is no carburetor heat. However, in the Carinado Cessna 172 and some of the other aircraft, there is carb heat. So that might be a time where you would turn on your carb heat. However, carb heat does slightly drop your RPM from your engine and your engine performance. So keep that in mind. Another thing, I know it's plenty warm out, but you could turn on your pitot heat as well, uh, just to prevent icing in your pitot static ports. Um, but we don't have to worry about that because there's no icing, we're not in precipitation, so we're not going to have to worry about icing. That's more so when you're flying through precipitation at that freezing level area. Um, if you're in an extremely cold area, chances are you're not going to run into the precipitation icing on your wings or anything like that. But it is something to, to be cognizant about as when you need to uh, turn on your pitot heat. <clears throat> so we can see that we are at about 4,000 feet. I'm going to continue my descent, and while I do that, I'm going to continue to eat my sandwich uh, because one thing that's awesome about Flight Simulator X is 
I can get up and go to my fridge and get a soda and make a pastrami sandwich if I would like. And that is what I did. So it sucks to be you passengers because I still cannot give you pastrami sandwiches. And I probably should have turned on my seatbelt. Please fasten your seatbelt. For this descent. So that that is a fail on my part. But we're doing a nice slow control descent, so there's nothing to worry about. We are now 40 nautical miles away from the airport that we are going to. Uh, we are going at a heading of roughly 115, I think it is. And I think the aircraft, or the airport is 10, um, 100. So, uh, we roughly are on the heading to almost just fly straight right in. But once we get closer, we will see what we, uh, actually are required to do to, uh, to As you can see, I'm getting closer to my altitude that I want to be at, so I'm slowly pushing in power. And you can see that my vertical speed indicator is coming up closer to zero. My rate of descent is slowing, and I am leveling out at about 3,500 feet. So what I'm going to do is come down here, put this to 3,500 feet. Stop skipping. 3,500 feet, and turn on my altitude hold again. And we will establish ourselves at 3,500 feet. <clears throat> so we are straight level at 3,500 feet. Autopilot is engaged again. And we have about another 35 miles to go until we get to Flying Cloud Airport. So what I am going to do is I'm going to cut the video, I think, one last time. And as I get closer to Flying Cloud Airport, roughly at about 15 miles or so, I'll probably bring you in and uh, let you watch the, the final 15 minutes of the flight. Looking outside, you can see we're not quite into Minneapolis. There are some more um, small towns and stuff getting here, so we're getting closer to the suburb area that is Minneapolis. You can kind of almost see it forming up here. <clears throat> but we still have a little ways to go, so I'll bring you back in about uh, 20 miles uh, when we're about 15 miles out, and you can watch the final descent get instructions from uh, Flying Cloud Tower, watch the landing, and we will go from there. So I will bring you all back in a little bit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And as you can see, I brought you in a little earlier. We're about 20 nautical miles away. However, you can see that I am now established on both the lo localizer and localizer and the glide slope right here. However, again, we're only using that for reference. We're not doing an ILS landing. We are gonna be doing a VFR landing. Uh, we are still flying towards the airport. We can see we are on path to intercept it. I believe I can see it right out here. If I'm not mistaken, I think I can see a little line right here, which I think might be runway 10, but I'm not positive on that. However, you can see this big lake right here. Uh, if I bring in our sky vector again, we can see this big lake right here, which we have to cross to get to our airport. So we're roughly probably around right here. Uh, so we are in the class B airspace area. However, we are underneath it again, uh, since we are at 3,500 feet. So we're under the class B airspace. Um, we're going to be crossing this big lake right here. And there is our airport and you can see that it's almost a straight east-west uh, runway uh, and we're not quite running on the east-west right there so we will have to turn to the south a little bit to get there um, but I did bring you back early because we are getting close uh, so actually what I'm gonna be doing is I am gonna start uh, getting ready to call that airport Right, I'm going to report them in sight quick and then I'm going to cancel my flight following. Minneapolis approach, Papa Hotel, Quebec 78, cancel flight following. Papa Hotel, Quebec 78, Minneapolis approach, cancellation received, squawk 1200, frequency change approved. Alright, so I'm going to squawk 1200, frequency change is approved. What I'm going to do is I'm going to contact 124.9, which 
will be uh, the ATIS information for Flying Cloud. Flying Cloud, airport information, Romeo, Mation 1825, Zulu, wind, calm, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition, clear condition, temperature 132.3, altimeter 2992, two. visual, runway 10 left in ILS, runway 10 right in use, landing and departing, runway 10 left in runway 10 right, VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back, hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact, you have Romeo. All right, we have the ATIS information, which is ATIS Romeo. Um, I'm going to actually start a little more of a descent, I think, coming up here. Um, so I'm going to turn off my altitude hold. I'm just going to pull back the throttle a little bit because I don't want to descend a whole lot. Seatbelt sign is still on. I'm going to pull up my nearest airport list and further from me further from me there's a lot of airports where is flying cloud there we are flying cloud so we're going to tune to their tower on 118 decimal 1 right now i'm going to automatically tune this one even though i don't like doing that 118 decimal 0 which it is on COM2, and we are going to request a full stop landing. Flying Cloud Tower, Papa Hotel, Quebec 78 is 13 miles northwest with Romeo to land. Papa Hotel, Quebec 78, Flying Cloud Tower, deploy straight in, runway 10 left, altimeter 29992. All right, so we'll acknowledge the pattern. Fly straight in, runway 10 left, Papa Hotel, Quebec 78. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quick bring over my Firefox window one more time, and I'm going to pull this over so you can see that we're going to be flying into 10 left right here, which is a smaller air airstrip. Um, it is not going to be the ILS one because in the ATIS information it said ILS was 10 right, and we're going to be flying into 10 left. So it is a smaller runway. It is not as wide. It is not as long. So you can see it's only 3,898 or 3,898 feet long and 75 feet wide, as opposed to 5,100. Uh, so that is what we're going to be flying into. So chances are, I'm not sure we're going to be parking, but chances are we'll get off on uh, taxiway Foxtrot right here. And that's when we'll find out whether we need to go um, to what parking we're going to be going to. So I, I believe we're going to be parking down here. So I think we'll take uh, Foxtrot and then turn right on Alpha. Uh, but I could be wrong on that. So we will find out. But that is uh, the plan for right now. So what I am going to do is I am going to keep us in manual. I am going to turn off my autopilot. I'm actually going to come down here too and turn on my landing lights and we're going to go into our descent checklist, ATIS airport information. We have already checked that. Fuel selector is on both. Altimeter is checked and set. Radios are set. Descent speed, we're doing 100 knots in airspeed, which we are doing. Descent rate is at 700 feet per minute, which we're not doing. I'm doing that non-standard. Flaps are still up and we have checked weather through ATIS. So descent checklist is complete. We're going into the approach checklist. Uh, we're not doing a localizer level flight, so landing lights are on now. Fuel pump, we will turn that on. Speed, uh, we're going to establish at 85 knots, and that is when we are going to do our flaps. So I'm actually going to start bringing in my first degree of flaps. Not yet, in a little while. But you can see the airport is over here. Uh, we are coming in a little bit from the north, so I'm going to start turning south so I can get uh, closer to that uh, one zero heading. We are still descending. You can see that we are actually on a pretty decent uh, glide slope right there, but we're not going to be using that. <clears throat> pedals since I'm going to be using them a lot more coming up. Uh, 
Uh, the airport is at uh, 900 feet, so I'm gonna level off, I'm gonna descend a little more because I wanna get to about 1900 for my final approach. So that is currently what I'm working on right now, is getting to about 1900 feet. Again, I'm probably gonna dip below the ILS glide slope, but that is fine with me. I actually am out under it right now, but I'm gonna continue to dip under it. Because again, that is for runway one zero right, and I am not gonna be flying that one. I'm gonna be doing runway one zero left. So we're gonna keep our descent going here a little more to about 1,900 feet. Pull back even a little more. And I'm actually gonna slow the aircraft down. about 85 knots and then we're going to put in our first detent of flaps. lights or pappy lights I can't tell from right here are for runway 10 zero right so we really won't have any of those indicators either for this uh, final landing all right we have our first uh, level of flaps in we can see that here is 10 zero right and here is 10 zero left and that is the air strip or the runway that we are going to be uh, shooting for. Make sure that we have all of this off, which we do. Alright, we're at about 1900 feet, so I'm going to give it a little more power. And pull back and throw power actually a little bit because I'm going to want to uh, slow my airspeed just a little more. So I just, uh, if you heard that, I put in my second detent of flaps. And I'm a little off to the right of this air strip. I don't know why I keep on calling it an air strip. Runway. Let's hope I don't suck this landing. <laughs> that's, a, that's my biggest fear is that I'm going to do this uh, nice flight for you guys and then I'm just going to completely botch the landing. Um, so I, I really don't want that to happen. I need a trim. I'm not paying enough attention to my landing here. It looks like there is a hill right before this runway, so it might be easier to fly on to 10-0 right, but we're going into 10-0 left. We're going to aim for about a 65 knot uh, touchdown speed, so I'm going to put in my third degree flaps, and I'm going to try to trim for 65 knots. Pull back my throttle a little more, we are still a little high. And it looks like it's Bassy lights on runway 10, 10 zero right. I have my landing uh, lights on, I forgot that. 
I think I had, yeah, I turned them on. I know I did, right? All right, here we come. Off to the right a little bit. Go back, throttle, slow down some. Oops, we are down. Landed a little to the right, but that is all right. Office Hotel Quebec 7 exit runway when able. All right. So, not a perfect landing. It landed a little harder than I would have liked and a little off to the right. It's a pretty narrow uh, runway, though, in game. I mean, it's harder to land on some of these narrow runways because your, your depth perception and your, your heading and stuff is it, not quite the same as in real life. Off at Hotel Quebec 7 contact ground on 121.7. All right, so we are on runway A3. So I'm gonna quick slow down, put on my brake, put on my parking brake. I'm gonna go to the, I'm gonna acknowledge my handoff quick to ground. One, two, one point seven for Papa Hotel, come back seven, eight. One, two, one point seven. Right there, we'll flip that. Request taxi to parking. One cloud ground, Papa Hotel, Quebec 7 8, taxi to parking. Papa Hotel, Quebec 7 8, taxi to General Aviation Park. Via taxiway, Alpha, Foxtrot, Bravo, Alpha. Alright, so I wrote that down, I'll acknowledge it. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking, using taxiway, Alpha, Foxtrot, Bravo, Alpha, Papa Hotel, Quebec 7 8. Alright, so we're gonna. Taxi via taxiway Alpha. Uh, what was it? Alpha Foxtrot Bravo Alpha. So, looking on my map right here, we're on A3. So, here's Alpha Foxtrot Bravo. Where's Alpha again? This might be a little off. So, I'm not sure if we're coming down here. So I might have to actually progressive taxi this one, which it is what it is. Anyway, we're going to quick go to taxi two ramp checklist. So I'm going to go down strobe light. I am going to turn that off. So strobe light is off. I'm going to turn on my taxi light. Uh, flaps are going to be retracted. Taxi lights on. Landing lights are coming off. Speed no more than 20 knots. Um, and we'll keep our beacon on and everything else is set transponder one two zero zero so I'm gonna take off my parking brake and please don't turn in here please don't turn in here okay he's not turning in here good so I'm gonna use a little bit of progressive taxi on this one just because the instructions don't seem clear to what uh, my airport diagram is showing and unfortunately I don't Maybe you can find airport diagrams for here, but... Alright, so right now everything is still making sense. So we're going to turn on to Alpha, and then we have to turn left on to Foxtrot. So here is Taxiway Foxtrot coming up. You can see uh, yellow on black is where you're at, white on yellow. Uh, and I don't know, I just remember white on, or yellow on black is where you're at, is how I remember. Black on yellow, uh follow I don't know what rhymes with yellow follow does follow rhyme all right so here's the active runway technically what you would do is as always uh, we would slow down and hold short make sure there are no aircraft coming I'm not seeing anything coming in so I'm gonna go because again I don't think the game ever <laughs> tells you to uh, proceed when you're at one of these taxiways and a hold short line. I'll slow down a little more. Just because I don't want to speed too much. Here's another one. I'm kind of <laughs> blowing past that one. Whoops. That was bad on me. I should have held short at that line. And I didn't uh, fail. <laughs> fail on me. All right, so I'm gonna turn here. Not that sure. All right, 
right, now we are on ta Taxiway Bravo, and my instructions told me then to go to Taxiway Alpha again, where I don't know where that is, unless they meant Echo, maybe. Because everything right now is lining up, so unless Bravo wraps all the way around to an Alpha, but I, I didn't think it did. Uh, so I, I don't think this lines up exactly with uh, what the airport diagram is. Here we can see that we're coming up on uh, runway 3618. So I'm going to slow down. And as always, I will... I shouldn't say as always, because I blew past the last one. But I'm just going to look over, make sure that there is no aircraft there. You can see Minneapolis-St. Paul, uh, a lot more aircraft over here because we're closer to that Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. But Flying Cloud is where my destination is because it's smaller and I would rather fly into that smaller airport than a giant Class B airport. Okay, so apparently this Office has... Hotel, Quebec, 7, 8, hold position, Sasha, the departing Cessna, Skyhawk. What? Departing... Oh, there's going to be someone departing there. So I'm going to acknowledge hold this position. hold position. Papa, hotel, Quebec, 7, 8. Now what I think is happening with the taxiways, if I don't, if I remember right, um, Flying Cloud actually updated their 10R. Uh, runway or 10 right or 28 left runway uh, where they made it longer and so what I think it happened is here you can see that uh, I don't know if that's taxiway Charlie right there that's Bravo but it's telling us to turn left and that's saying Charlie and it looks like it is Charlie so I think the game's instructions were just wrong Papa, Hotel Quebec 7 8 continue taxi all right, so we're going to acknowledge Papa, our Hotel, continued Quebec, taxi. Because our instructions were Alpha 3, Alpha, Foxtrot, Bravo, Alpha. And it doesn't say anything about runway, our taxiway Charlie, which is what we're going to be taking. So it makes a lot more sense now. Why they had us come all the way around like this instead of just taking uh, where, we, where we had gotten off and turning right instead of left is... It's kind of beyond me, because we're doing a giant loop-de-loop -loop right now. But, whatever. So, pull back on the throttle one more time. smoothest of landings. I'm a little disappointed with it. I was caught off guard by that hill in front, so I started coming in a little too hot and couldn't quite correct for it, but um, whatever. That's what happens when you never <laughs> when I've never landed at this uh, runway before. Uh, double check again. I'm using easy camera for all these quick camera movements, too. I have a map to my yoke. I have a a button on my yoke that I have a map to where I can easily switch my camera views and stuff. So that's that's how I'm doing that, just in case you're wondering. In the description below, there is uh, links to all the mods that I am using. If you are so curious as to want to use them or anything like that. Alright. I see where we have to park now next to that other... Uh, like another Cessna 172 or so. Oh, that, no, that might be a Cub because it's a tail. Tail-wheeled aircraft. So right to our right is another Cessna, but I think we might be landing next to like a Piper Super Cub or something like that. I think Piper makes the Cubs. Could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. Passions or satisfaction, though, is at 100, and that makes me quite happy. I go forward some. I think I'm off to the right a little, but that's alright. 
Uh, we're pretty close to on it. All right. So we are at our taxi location. Throttle is throttle is idle. Uh, taxi to ramp is completed, so we can go on with our shutdown checklist. So what I am going to do is parking brake. I just set that, and as we can confirm that it is pulled out. Throttle is at idle. Fuel pump, we're gonna go down here and switch that to off. Avionic switch, we'll switch that to off. Taxi lights and nav lights, we'll switch those off. Uh, where's nav? I must have already shut down my nav light. Fail. Pedo heat is off. Mixture fuel flow, we're gonna pull that out to cut off. Our engine is gonna shut off. Magneto starter switch, we're gonna pull that all the way over to off. Beacon, we could turn that off, but I always leave it on. That way, next time I come into the aircraft, it will be on, even though the game doesn't save that in real life. That's what I do. Panel lights, we are going to turn those off. Battery switch off, and alternator switch is off. So our aircraft is in the cold and dark position. What I am going to do is come over here and hit Shift-E to open my door. And we are onboarding passengers. So, 27 seconds left till they're unboarded. Well, they unboard, I'm just going to bring this back over. So you can see we were right here and we taxied over around like this, down Foxtrot, over on Bravo. And here's that Charlie, which they did not give us. So it just said Bravo to Alpha. And that's why I was confused. Because I, I had all this right, but then it said straight to Alpha. And there is no Alpha. So they failed to give me a taxiway Charlie. So that's why I was confused. Onboarding complete, select end flight in FS Passengers Flight Menu. So I'm going to go to that, FS Passengers Flight, End Flight. And we are going to look at how we did. Apparently my landing touchdown was nice. I thought I landed a little hard. Um, you can see that that was Flight Papa Hotel Quebec 789. It was a normal flight with Frick Fur as the pilot for Frick Airlines. Cessna Skyhawk 172 starting our SP, Sierra Papa. This is the date of the flight. Arrival from Hector International, the flying cloud. That's what I wanted to do. Flight distance was 188 nautical miles. So I thought it was about 200, so a little shorter than I was expected. Time airborne was just under two hours. Uh, total flight time was two hours and 16 minutes. Time on ground, 25 minutes. Average speed, 98 knots. Landing speed was at 60, and I was shooting for 65, so I was a little slower than, than what I wanted, but that's all right. Touchdown, uh, 256 feet per minute. Nice. I thought it was a little hard, but whatever. Decent landing pitch. Total fuel used, 98 pounds. Exceptional flight by passenger opinion. That makes me happy. And how the hell did, <laughs> how did we lose so much money? Oh, man. $209 for the tickets and penalty costs. Penalty costs? What penalties did I have? Uh, the landing lights must be activated when entering the runway until 10,000 feet. You forgot them. Our company received a fine of $350. And I forgot to activate the nav lights. Oh my gosh. $350 bill. Wow, the ticket un income was only $100 for that flight. So apparently what I have to do is I have to go into FS Passengers and increase my uh, ticket price. And I might have to turn off this light penalty. Light. Am I just supposed to leave my landing light on through the entire flight if it's under 10,000 feet? Or maybe I'll just do that. I'll just, uh, next flight, I'm going to have to leave my landing light on the entire time because I lost a lot of money that flight where if I wouldn't have had this, I would have made money. So that's kind of stupid that I lost that much money because of the landing lights, which in real world flight, I did right. But apparently in FS passengers, anytime under 10,000 feet, you need to keep them on. So for my next flight, I will just keep them on the entire time. Other than that, though, I'm I'm happy with the flight. I think it went well. I made a nice landing. 
uh, perfect flight, no problems, and you landed at the scheduled airport. So my uh, points went up, my passenger re or my company reputation went up. So all in all, I guess it was pretty good. Uh, flight passenger flight. Papa Hotel Quebec 789 ended flight registered in pilot's flight log. Um, it automatically registers because that's what setting I have. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my first flight uh, for my video series, uh, Let's Play Flight Simulator X, less, uh, FS Passengers. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to comment or message. Uh, message me or comment on the video please subscribe if you do like the videos because i am going to be pum pumping out more of these and i hope you guys enjoy them i'm trying to make them both entertaining but also educational at the same time uh so you can get some uh good fsx information for flying in fsx but also some real world flying information as well uh to to kind of uh go over both of those so i i hope you guys like uh what I'm trying to do with these videos, uh, like I said, do please subscribe and message or comment if you do have any questions uh, or just want to say hi or anything like that. I would love to hear from the people who are watching these videos. Uh, also, give me suggestions if you want to see me fly to any particular airports or fly any particular aircraft in general. So uh, do give me some suggestions with those and I will try to cater to them the best that I can. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and my next video, what I'm probably going to do is a flying tour so I can show you one of those, and then I'm probably going to do some on my own, uh, so that way uh, I can try to make some more income so I can get out of this stupid default Cessna 172, uh, because I don't want to fly this anymore. I'd much rather fly uh, something a little more fun to fly. So... I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will be posting this and making some more, and I will catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.